Good afternoon and a warm welcome to Bishop Clyde Martin Harvey, members of the clergy, and to you brothers and sisters. Today is indeed an auspicious day as we celebrate the 25th anniversary of our beloved parish priest, Father Godwin Nadozi, MSP. We thank our Heavenly Father for a wonderful day and for allowing us all to gather here in thanksgiving. Let me join the rest of the church in congratulating you, Father Godwin, as you celebrate this sacred milestone. We thank God for the work he has done and the work that he will continue to do with you. We thank him for creating such a powerful prayer warrior who makes a mark wherever he goes. We celebrate this day knowing that God is with you always and we ask his mercy for you and for many celebrations and anniversaries to come. I invite everyone to feel at home here at Sacred Heart Parish. Once again, welcome, welcome, welcome. The Mass is about to begin and we would have the procession when the chief celebrant gets to this altar, we will all stand and he would kneel. The choir would lead us in the entrance hymn. Choir.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters in Christ. Good afternoon, Father. And welcome to this 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time, Ye See. Today, I warmly welcome you to this church, Sacred Heart Parish Church in Tivoli. I thank God today in a special way as I mark 25 years in the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ as his priest and servant. And I thank all of you who have come out today to share this day in joy and in gratitude with me and with the parish and with the family of the MSP. Lots of greetings from my biological family back home. They are aware and they are watching us from the, the platforms. So I want to thank all of you who have gathered here, the parishioners, the, our bishop, priests, sisters, deacons, friends and well-wishers who are here in this church this afternoon. May God bless you and reward you through Christ our Lord. Amen. I also extend a warm greetings to all our parishioners in diaspora, those who have joined us through the various platforms, and also Catholics in the diocese who are not able to be here today, but they are watching us through our media communications. May God bless and reward each and every one of you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we come to this moment, moment of the Eucharist, moment of the sacrifice. It is for this that I was ordained, to offer the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so we bow our heads, ask God for his blessings, his goodness, and his protection. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen.
Let us pray. Holy Father, who by no merit of my own chose me for communion with the eternal priesthood of your Christ and for the ministry of your church, grant that I may be an ardent yet gentle preacher of the gospel and the faithful steward of your ministry. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading will be taken from the prophet Isaiah, which will be proclaimed by Ray Thomas. The responsorial psalm will be proclaimed by Lynn Stephen. And the second reading will be proclaimed by Reverend Sister Delia Monrose. The gospel will be proclaimed by Deacon Godric Daniel. Let us now listen attentively to the word. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Rejoice, Jerusalem. Be glad for her, all you who love her. Rejoice, rejoice for her, all you who mourned her. That you may be suckled, filled from her consoling breast. That you may savor with delight her glorious breast. For thus says the Lord, now towards her I send flowing peace like a river, and like a stream in spate the glory of the nations. At her breasts will her nurslings be carried and fondled in her lap. Like a son comforted by his mother will I comfort you, and by Jerusalem you will be comforted. At the sight your heart will rejoice, and your bones flourish like the grass. To his servants, the Lord will reveal his hand. This is the word of the Lord. response, the blessing cup that we bless is a communion with the blood of Christ. The blessing cup that we bless is a communion with the blood of Christ. The blessing cup that we bless is a
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. This is what I received from the Lord, and in turn passed on to you, that on the same night that he was betrayed, A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. The only thing I can boast about is the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom the world is crucified to me and I to the world. It does not matter if a person is circumcised or not. What matters is for him to become an altogether new creature. Peace and mercy to all who follow this rule, who form the Israel of God. I want no more trouble from anybody after this. The marks on my body are those of Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, my brothers. Amen. The word of the Lord. I call you friends, says the Lord, because I have made known to you everything I have learned from my Father. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o At that time, the Lord appointed 72 others, whom he sent ahead of him in pairs, to every town and place he intended to visit. He said to them, the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. Go on your way. Behold, I am sending you like lambs among wolves. Carry no money bag, no sack, no sandals, and greet no one along the way. Into whatever house you enter, first say peace to this household. 
if a peaceful person lives there, your peace will rest on him. But if not, it will return to you. Stay in the same house and eat and drink what is offered to you. For the laborer deserves his payment. Do not move about from one house to another. Whatever town you enter and they welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick in it and say to them, the kingdom of God is at hand for you. Whatever town you enter and they do not receive you, go out into the streets and say, the dust of your tongue that clings to our feet, even that will shake off against you. Yet, know this, the kingdom of God is at hand. I tell you, it will be more tolerable for Sodom on that day than that tongue. The 72 returned rejoicing and said, Lord, even the demons are subject to us because of your name. Jesus said, I have observed Satan fall like lightning from the sky. Behold, I have given you the power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and upon the full force of the enemy and nothing will harm you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice because the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice because your names are written in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Twenty-five years ago, it is as if it, has, it was uh, five years in my mind. I remember I was in my second year of spiritual year formation program. Father Augustus and myself were in that class. And Father Godwin was newly ordained, assigned to a parish within the diocese where our spiritual year formation house is situated. And in that diocese, there is a Catholic eye hospital. And I remember at that time, I was a regular patient to that hospital. And each time I went for checks, the sisters, the nuns walking in the hospital will remind me that there is a priest. There is one MSP priest newly ordained who is in the parish not far from the hospital. I was just a seminarian. In fact, I was not fully mature seminarian. And this newly ordained priest never set his eyes on me and when the sisters called him that there is one of the students of MSP here, he didn't know who it was. But immediately he heard that one of our spiritual year postulants is there for checkup. He requested and insisted that the nuns attend to me as fast as they could. He told them, to jump the queue and cause this order just that I could be attended to and I could return to school before late. And like I said, I was a regular patient, so every time I go, even if he is not there, he would direct the sisters to show me where the parish house is so that I can have lunch before I leave. 
and go back to school. And so, it is the first time I set my eyes on Father Godwin. He was a, he was a priest, newly ordained. And we only met once, and in the busy work of being the bishop's secretary at that time, he would always greet, tell me where the dining is, where food is, and then off he goes to his duty. I looked at this man, this young man at that time, he didn't have gray hairs. I looked at this man, and I looked ahead. The years before me, I admired a new priest. And I thought of the years before me, before I could become like this man, when, I, when would I be like him, newly ordained, with all the zeal? I could not have imagined that I would be asked to say a few words at his silver jubilee. Who am I? <laughs> Last week, 25th of June, Saturday, we, the missionaries of St. Paul, were blessed with five new priests. Every year before our ordinations, we usually have what we call our general assembly at our headquarters for members who serve in Nigeria or others who are in Nigeria on vacation. All members must be at that assembly. So this assembly took place two days before the ordination last week. And the keynote speaker at that assembly refreshed our memories with the history of our humble beginnings as missionaries of St. Paul. He used a very touching phrase to drive home his message. What did he say? It was founded, our society was founded with a great sense of unity of purpose. Unity of purpose, that is the phrase. A hymn written by Alan Dell and composed by Herbert Richards was raised, as always, and this hymn serves as an anthem for all missionaries. God's spirit is in my heart. He has called me and set me apart. This is what I have to do. What I have to do. He sent me to bring the good news to the poor. Tell prisoners that they are prisoners no more. The blind people that they can see Set the downtrodden free And go tell everyone The news that the kingdom of God has come And go tell everyone The news that God's kingdom has come we gather to thank God with and for Father Godwin. And the message of the scripture reminds us today of that phrase, the unity of purpose, our focus, our commitment, our courage to witness. We are reminded in the words of the scripture that we are reminded of the charge has given to us as Christians, all of us, baptized and sent to be bearers, ambassadors, messengers of peace. We have gathered this afternoon to celebrate the gift of the priesthood, the gift of health, the gift of life for Father Godwin, 25 years as a priest, some of those years as a student, some as a teacher, as a formator of seminarians, as a pastor. It has taken him from Nigeria to South Africa, to England, to the Gambia. And right now, 
here in Grenada and everywhere we go, that place becomes our family. We thank God with his biological family who were generous enough to bring him up in the love and fear of God and give him as a gift to the church. My dear brothers and sisters, many times we can be tempted to take things, to take certain things for granted and even forget to stop and give thanks. To give thanks to God and give thanks to God's people who always walk with us on our journey. So thank you, Father Godwin, for inviting us to celebrate with you. And remember to keep counting your years, but not just your years of service, but also your blessing. Your blessings, many blessings. The grace you have received from God, the strength, even in the moment of weakness. St. Paul writes, as we're listening to the second reading, and Father, uh, Father uh, Roland, Father Ronald, <laughs> whispered to my ear, he said, Paul is a very frank man. And Paul says in the second reading, I have seen enough trouble, I don't want more. And St. Paul says in the second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 30, he said, if I have to boast, I boast on my own weakness, which means I boast on what the grace of God has been able to use me to do. So, Father, remember always that you are a messenger. It is a master story that you are telling. So may God continue to give you grace to be a caring pastor, a good teacher, to walk humbly, to love tenderly and act justly, and to be his bearer of peace. My dear people of God, we are all missionaries. We are all invited to join the 72 others. The harvest is great. It is even greater in our days. The laborers are few, even fewer in our days. And we experience that as a church, as a diocese. So we must give a helping hand with commitment. We must be represented. We must bring our commitment into the band, the host of 72 others who were called and sent because the 11 or the 12 plus Jesus 13, they could not do all. They could not, they needed a helping hand to represent Every baptized, not just the clergy and the religious. And sometimes many of us are tempted to leave all the work for them, thinking that they are specialists, thinking that they have all the experiences, but sometimes we are more experienced than the clergy. We are more learned, and in fact, we have in our own areas of, of our professions, we have excelled. And we are called to use these gifts, these talents, and this grace that God has given us in our different form, uh, ways and different areas of profession to enrich the church, to join the band of apostles. We are not spectators, no. Last um, Wednesday, 29th of June, Pope Francis issued an apostolic letter on the formation of the people of God on liturgy. Desiderio desideravi. In Luke's Gospel, chapter 22, verse 15, how I have longed to celebrate this Passover with you. And the Pope said, for a gift to be truly a gift, there must be someone or some people ready to receive it. People who are called don't necessarily acquire more intelligence, more imagination and experience, I repeat. They will continue to rely on their natural gifts from God. That means they need our prayers. 
please pray for your priests. Pray for your bishop. Pray for your deacons. Pray for all the religious, all who give their life for a cause of the gospel. Pray for us. Let us keep praying for one another. But remember again, we are all instruments. Instruments in God's hands. Certain things will remain undone if we do not do them. That any house you enter, let your greeting be peace unto this house. If the child of peace is there, your peace will remain. If not, it will go back with you. Don't worry. What is peace? Does not necessarily mean the absence of war. That this place is calm and no other person is speaking in this church. If I keep quiet, everybody will be silent. That does not mean there is peace. There is silence. That we have neighbors who always fight or some household on fire every morning and this morning we didn't hear their voice and we think there is peace. They are quiet for the time. Or maybe they are out. What is peace? Peace must mean our forgiveness, our understanding. Peace must mean our reconciliation, our responsibility, our openness to one another. Peace must come from the heart. Nobody can give what he or she does not have. And so if God makes you, if God makes me notice a problem, it means that he wants me to be part of the solution of that problem. Not just to notice a problem and sit down and criticize and discourage others who would like to give a helping hand. And let us remember, according to the gospel we listen to, our sense of success. The disciples came back and said, you know what, master? The devils, when they heard your name, your name, they fall in front of us. They, were, they must have been very excited. They must have felt very good. But Jesus said, it's not enough for them to fall at the mention of my name. Do not rejoice because of that, but rejoice that you have made a contribution. Your name is written in the book of heaven. I can ask, whose register is my name written in? Whose register is your name written in? So, we are also reminded that it is not the power we, that we possess. It's not about us. It's not about us. Because Matthew chapter 6, when we do all this to attract men's attention, we have had our reward. The sincerity in the commitment. It is not the power we possess, but rather it is about the power that possesses us. So, my dear people of God, may this celebration renew, Father God, we and all of us in grace and in zeal, in unity of purpose, in dedication and grace to inspire and encourage others along the way which we all journey together. If God gives us this grace, it will make a huge difference. Lord, we pray, make all of us channels of your peace. Amen. Amen.
gate of the Virgin Mary and the Lamb. For Saint was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God brings comfort, consolation, and hope to all people. May our prayers today bear witness to our faith in God, who refuses kindness to no one. As we make our prayer presentations, we ask the Lord of all glory to hear us and to listen to us as we pray. Let us pray for the church, that we may freely share the gifts that God has given us, be open to receive the gifts that others have, and trust that God will sustain us each day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Let us pray for the grace to embrace the cross, that we may accept the sufferings of life and allow them to transform us into new creations in Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us, let us pray for Father Godwin, our pastor, in his ministry to the people of Sacred Heart Parish, that we may affirm, support, and celebrate his gift of ser service to us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for, the, let us pray for all priests, who are ordained to serve our church, that their ministry may be fruitful and appreciated by the people whom they serve. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us, let us pray for lay people who have assumed leadership of the church's ministry that the spirit will guide them in continuing the work of of jesus in pastoral service education health care or social service and in bringing forth the reign of god today we pray to the lord lord hear our prayer let us pray for all who who strive to hand on the faith that God will inspire parents, teachers, and preachers to share the good news in and be effectively and dynamically with all whom they interact. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Pray for each of us that we may hear God's call and share in the mission of the church by bringing hope, relieving burdens, and offering passionate understanding to all who touch our lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who have requested for our prayers at this Mass, especially Bernadette, Abraham, Kevin, and Jace. Thomas, may the Lord accept our prayer for them and grant their hearts desires. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We now 
say the Synod prayer. We stand before you, Holy Spirit, as we gather together in your name. If you are alone to guide us, make yourself at home in our hearts. Teach us the way we must go and how we are to pursue it. We are weak and sinful. Do not let us propose this order. Do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path, nor partiality influence our actions. Let us find in you our unity so that we may journey together to eternal life and not stray from the way of truth and what is right. All this we ask of you, who are at work in every place and time, in communion of the Father and the Son, forever and ever. Amen. We invite our Blessed Virgin Mother Mary, the Mother of Priests, to intercede for us as we pray. Hail Mary. Full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among the men, and blessed is the fruit of our own Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Father, we come before you in faith and love to praise your goodness and acknowledge our needs. We ask you to hear the prayers we make in the name of Jesus the Lord. Gracious God, we ask you to continue to watch over the lives of your people. Hear our prayers and grant that we may draw closer to you each day. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. At this point, we will have collection you will come down on the aisles at the side, please, the two aisles at the side, and you will go back to the middle. The ushers will assist you as you come down. The children from the Sacred Heart Parish will lead in the offertory procession with a dance.
Sacrifice of mine may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your heart for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy children. Amen. We offer you the sacrifice of praise, O Lord, for the deepening of our service of you, so that what you have conferred on us, unworthy as we are, you may graciously bring to fulfillment through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his Paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death. Summoning us to the glory of his being now called. Our chosen race, our royal priesthood, our holy nation, our people for your own possession. To proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with all angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. In the heart, oh, Dana, oh, Dana, oh, Dana, oh, Dana, in the You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy, and you never cease to gather our people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, 
by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Your holy death, O Lord, we remember. Amen. Your blessed resurrection we proclaim. Amen. Your coming in glory we await. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with your blessed Joseph as spouse, your blessed Apostle, the glorious martyrs, and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Clyde Martin, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, a merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at the passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
confident in the teaching of our Lord and Savior, we now sing the prayer which Jesus taught us as the pattern of all prayers. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always freed from sin and saved from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you say to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all.
people who takes away your sin and my sin. Blessed all of us called to the supper of the Lamb. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve all of us who receive it to life everlasting. Amen.
Let us pray. For the glory of your name, O Lord, I have joyfully celebrated the mystery of faith to mark the 25th anniversary of my priestly ordination, so that I may be in truth what I have handled mystically in this sacrifice. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. We will now have our announcements by our parish pastoral council chairperson, Sister Nicole Batiste, followed by the vote of thanks by Father Godwin. A pleasant good afternoon to you, our Bishop Clyde Martin. Avi, our clergy, brothers and sisters all. Parish announcement for today, 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time, Year C. The Sacred Heart Catholic School graduation will be held on Tuesday, 5th July at 9 a.m. at this church. All parishioners are invited. Thursday, July 7th, Parish Finance Committee meeting in Tivoli at 5.30 p.m. Stations representatives should endeavor to attend. July 12th, Parish Pastoral Council meeting in Tivoli at 5 p.m. Stations representatives should endeavor to be present. Battle Hill pilgrimage takes place on Sunday, July 10th at 3 p.m. at the Battle Hill Shrine. The celebration would also be streamed live on all GNCC platforms. Thus far, we have received donations from eight persons towards the ongoing church painting. Total amount received as of today is $1,800 plus one bucket of five gallon paint. Your donation and contribution are needed, no matter how small it may be. Thanks for your generous gift. Mass schedule for next weekend, Saturday, Mount Rose, 5.30 p.m. Sunday, Mount, Sunday at Tivoli, 8.30 a.m., Moya at 7 a.m., and Hermitage at 10.30 a.m. Last Sunday collection, one mass in the parish, the total was $912.65. The second collection for Peter Spence, a total of $378.50. Thanks for your generous gift. Wishing everyone a blessed Sunday. Good afternoon, everybody. My dear Jubilarian, Father Dean, and other members of the clergy, my dear sisters who do so much work in the parishes and 
I am very clear in my own mind, no priest would go be a good priest if he didn't know how to collaborate with nuns. So I presume, Father, that you've learned how to do that. Are you hearing me? Are you all hearing me? You're not hearing me? Oh, all right. <laughs> yes, when I was a seminarian, you heard of priests celebrating 25 and 50 years. You didn't hear anything about one, about five, or about ten. And then I became a priest, and uh, people began to celebrate the first anniversary, and five, and ten, and fifteen. And when Archbishop Pantin asked why the change, there was a very cheeky priest called Father Terence Julian, who subsequently left the ministry. He said, well, you know, the way things are going in the world today, we don't know if we're going to make 25 or 50, so we better start with one or five. <laughs> but Archbishop Pantin did not agree to an annual big celebration. He said, okay, 5, 10, 15, 20. But when you reach 25, you have therefore every right to celebrate. I was happy to be able to come today because, Father Godwin, I don't know if you remember, when Father Godwin first came, he came at a time when we were just beginning to get off out of the starting box, so to speak, with a few things that we needed to do. And uh, I had been wondering, Father Carl and myself had come to some decisions as to what we wanted to do with regard to clergy. And I had insisted with Father Kufre, I don't know if he remembers that, that we needed more members, more MSP priests. And that was very particular, because I knew that what we needed was priests who had a sense of mission, priests who were very, very clear about their commitment to people. And you can't always presume that. But Father Kufre, if you might take an early bow, you exemplified that for me. So when I asked you to ask your superiors to send others, I had no illusions as to what I could get. But when Father Godwin arrived, he immediately began to show me his value. And I remember some particular things. I came for a confirmation. Just a few days, no, not days, a few weeks after we had really gotten out of the starting blocks with our three themes, live, community, you remember them? Huh? Yes, and serve country, right. So we had those three. And then we had education, mental health, and food security. And we had a confirmation, and that confirmation, it was clear to me that the parish had already taken on board, you know. And as I sat there this afternoon, my mind came back to Matthias Lewis, that giant of a man. Because at that particular celebration as well, Matthias came up here and gave me a lesson in food security. <laughs> But all of that was because Father Godwin jumped into the fray immediately and immediately got going with what he knew was the spirit of the diocese, or at least what we wanted to be the spirit of the diocese. And immediately I was able to say, thank you, God, for sending this priest. He continued to show those qualities. And then pastoral crisis. When there is a crisis, very few people know there's a crisis sometimes, but we had a kind of crisis with the funeral of Matthias Joseph because some things that I thought I had to say we can't go that far and we had to convince people, you know, let's take it easy, let's not 
And uh, Father Godwin showed himself to be an excellent pastor. That go-between between bishop and family, which you need in those moments. And then he was willing to take some of the flack for me from the family as well. So, my dear brother, you have proven your value way beyond measure. And I cannot say that before you came to Grenada, you did this, you did that, you did the other. You talked about some of that, Cameroon and so on, you know. But your formation, obviously, over the 25 years, have made you into a wonderful pastor. And we are grateful to God for that. The gospel text has a final section to it. Do not rejoice. And they say, My Lord, the Spirit submit to us, and so on, you know. And they were awed. They were so proud of themselves. And Jesus says, I saw Satan fall like lightning. And I don't think that's the gospel for today by chance. I think it is a gospel for you to ponder and to ask the Lord to help you to allow it to sink deep within your heart. Because all of us priests have to know that in our own lives. The early years are years when everybody prays us. You have to be really no good for people to look at you as a young priest and not say some good things about you. There will always be that. But then as you get to middle age, you have to learn how to take all that praise with a grain of salt. So how old are you now? <laughs> you know, no, but seriously. As you mature as a priest, the words of Jesus in this text become all the more real. Right. Do not rejoice that the Spirit submit to you. Do not rejoice at how much power you seem to have. Do not rejoice if your name gets into the papers. If people send you all kinds of gifts and say, Oh, God, Father, nobody ever preached like this at a funeral in my family. The whole family impressed. Do not rejoice at those things. Free yourselves so that you are able to rejoice in those wonderful words that your name is written in heaven. To be written, to remember those passages in Scripture where, for instance, with Haggai, write it down. Write it down. And when it is written down, what the Scriptures are already saying is when it is written, there is a certain permanence to it. When people say it, when people praise you, the words come and go. But when it is written, and it is written in heaven, there is a permanence to it. And this is something that every priest, every religious, every Christian must hope for. That we are able to live our lives in such a way that what people say, how, how the spirits submit and all that kind of thing, that is not what's important anymore. We seek to be so close to God and so clear in our communion with him that our names are written in heaven. And so, my dear brother, I don't have the power to write your name in earth or heaven, but by God, I look forward to Jesus himself writing it in the book of life. Amen. And I want, are your parents alive? No, okay. Well, to all your siblings, how many brothers and sisters do you have? Uh -huh. Okay. They are, they are looking on, I presume. Right. So to Godwin's family, siblings and others, I say thank you. Thank you for allowing him to become a missionary of St. Paul. Thank you for not crying when he said he was going to the Caribbean. Thank you for supporting him along these 25 years. And may God richly bless you all as well as the ties between Caribbean and Africa and Nigeria continue to deepen and to flourish. Amen.
So let's all stand as we ask God's special blessing on our dear brother. Mother of God, behold us at your altar, happy to be the servants of your Son. Grant that the world may never make us falter, keep us unspoiled till victory is won. Queen of the clergy, bless him we pray, keep him from harm, up unfold him in your love. God is endeavors all through life's day. When life is o'er, take him to heaven above. When life is o'er, take him to heaven above. And so, gracious God, we thank you for Godwin. We thank you for calling him 25 years ago and even before that. We thank you for the journey he has made. We thank you especially, Lord, for the brothers who have supported him in the missionaries of St. Paul. And we ask you, Lord, even now, to continue to deepen his spirit, to strengthen his heart with a deep and abiding love for your people, to guide his steps, especially while he is with us here in Grenada, so that he may continue to be a pastor admirabilis, a shepherd of your flock, a friend to sinners, and a colleague of his brother priests. And so, Godwin, the Lord blessed you from the day of your birth. He blessed you further on the day of your baptism, and on the day of your ordination, he took you unto himself as his priest. May his blessing continue to un unfold in your heart, as he walks with you through the darkest night and the brightest day, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Be seated. And from the missionaries of St. Paul to all of you, to the first to God Almighty for making this day possible, this year's possible. Uh, Father Kufri didn't go in detail because I warned him seriously to keep certain family things within the family. <laughs> so, the journey for the past 25 years has not been easy. If I stand here to tell you that it has been easy, I'm a liar. It has not been easy. Are there moments of joy? Yes, there were moments of joy. But were there moments of tears and sorrows and sleepless nights? Yes, plenty of them. But in all of them, we have come thus far, and we thank God for this day. And I pray that the few more years that we'll be there, I pray that God will give us the grace and to pass through, through Christ our Lord. So I want to thank in a special way our bishop, the clergy, priests, deacons, sisters, and all who have come this afternoon to grace this day, to pray with me, and to rejoice with me. I don't know how many more years left, but I told some of my parishioners that are right now, 
I'm singing the song of Saint, uh, Simeon. At last, all powerful master, you can give leave to your servant to go in peace according to your promise. <laughs> so if he comes any moment from now, I'm very much ready. So we thank God for that. And I want to say thank you to you, my parishioners, my friends, my well-wishers. Most of you have come from far and near. Some of you have come from the cathedral. Some of you have come from Guelph. By the way, Guelph was my first parish community. So some, some of them are here. And also some are from St. Mark. St. Mark the Evangelist. St. Mark the Evangelist was my first uh, pastoral assigned area. So that was the first place I started working in the diocese. And so some are from Sotes here, some from River Sally, some from St. Andrew, the Apostle, my immediate two neighbor parishes. And those from other places, I want to say thank you. Grand Roy, I will not forget them because Grand Roy was one of my places of pastoral assignment when I was in Gulf. So Grand Roy that are here, Grand Roy and Concord people that are here, and my heart go out and I say thank you for coming and for gracing this occasion. So I want to say thank you and thank you to all of you for coming. This afternoon, we just have two things to do. The first one was to pray together, and which we are coming to the end of that praying together. And then the second part of it is to socialize together. 25 years does not come every day. So now that it has come, I want to use the opportunity to socialize. Please don't run home. Sit back, relax. We have enough to eat and to drink. My mother used to tell me that whatever is enough for five will be enough for seven. <laughs> so, and I believe that seriously. So whatever we have prepared, we have prepared having everybody in mind. And I want to say a special thank you to, to friends and well-wishers and parishioners. The gathering this afternoon did not cost the parish any money at all. The parish did not spend any money on this gathering. It is just friends and well-wishers. So I want to thank you for all the sacrifice you have made. I will not call them because many of them warned me seriously not to mention their names. So I just want to keep it flat. Whatever you have done, whatever you have contributed, whatever you have really donated generously for today. I pray from the depth of my heart that God will bless you, reward you, and give you his abundant blessings through Christ our Lord. Amen. I will not close without saying a special thank you to the choir. You have been, uh, you have been awesome this evening. As I said, thank you very much. You have made the day very, very spiritual and highly enriching. I pray that this spirit we use this time will take us to the next level. So not when we finish this celebration, we all go back and relax. So when we feel after this celebration, let's target something higher, something greater. So please, thank you for coming. If I've not mentioned your name, it is intentional. I don't want to mention anybody's name. So thank you and thank you and thank you and may God bless all of us through Christ our Lord. Amen. So they have asked me to do so that we can go. Please, after this Mass, um, we will move down to the school. The school is just here. We will move down to the school. Reception will take place. The Thank you. May we rise for final blessing. <coughs> GNCC, I, in my tradition, I acknowledge you.
I know what you people are doing, and we pray that you continue to do it better and better. May God bless you. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Bow your heart and pray for God's blessings. May the good Lord bless you and keep you through Christ our Lord. Amen. May he let his face shine upon you and grant you peace through Christ our Lord. And may you see many happy more days to come and they reach you with spiritual blessings through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.